dependency. So let's talk. We have two House members, Paul Tonko, Democrat from New York, Tom Price, Republican from Georgia. Paul Tonko, welcome back to the show. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Mr. Hoyer. I know him. I wish he'd come back on our show and talk to me about this. But I beg your pardon. The whole center of gravity, whether it's food stamps, whether it's Social Security disability, whether it's uh, all these dependents uh, uh, on transfer payments, the center is shifting to government dependency, and that is a bad sign, sir. Well, I don't think it's uh, shifting to that dependency. I think it's biting the tide. It's getting us through a tough time. And I think that there are many. Uh, in fact, unanimity uh, was the uh, outcome from economists when they were advising at the beginning of 2009, both the White House and Congress, about what could quick jumpstart the economy. And it was just that. It was safety net programs that spoke to a middle class, working uh, poor community that was uh, without work through no fault of their own. And that would engage the local region economies, which it did. And uh, while you could argue that we're still at 8% unemployment, there are many theorists out there who say that it would have been double, uh, two points uh, higher if uh, if those programs well, were not available. Oh, Larry, but, Larry, uh, look, Larry, the, the American people are scratching their heads and saying, throwing things at the television when they hear this kind of stuff. They know that it's not dependency on the government that expands the economy. What expands the economy is certainty out there, as your previous guests have said, certainty in the tax arena, and making certain that we free up the job creators. And, and the job creators actually do things out there to create jobs. It's not that they get their guidance from the federal government. Well, to my good friend from Georgia, though, Larry, I would say the job creators are the small business community and the tax cut that we're talking about, extending the tax cut for the middle class for small business, you're covering 96 to 97 percent of small business is the order. The, actually, uh, the what you're going to do is increase the, job the taxes. Uh, no, the, Paul, you're going to increase the taxes on the job creators. The million, million small businesses out there that will see their taxes go up, 53% uh, of the small business income going to see an increased tax uh, through, through your policies. In fact, what's changed over the last two years? Because two years ago, the president said you wouldn't want to do this in an economic downturn. What has changed? It the certainly effort, isn't the any better. Here, the effort here is to provide the middle class the kind of available spending power that then provides contracts, that provides business for the small business community and the industrial base. They need customers. The confidence that comes by empowering the purchasing power of the middle class is what this is all about. And it's about agree. assisting the small business you community. Don't create customers by us, expanding on Can all three of us agree that tax cuts, however you determine that, of course, I favor a full extension of the Bush tax cuts, but let's put that aside. Tax cuts, what, which, Larry, create, what did that inspire? Tax cuts which create incentives to work and grow and invest sure. are vastly better than robbing people to pay Paul than paying people not to work, than expanding welfare programs. In other words, what Denny, Larry, what Denny, Hoyer, what Denny Hoyer said was so utterly wrong. We do not want government dependency. We want work effort, it seems to me. So, so Larry, we you're agree agree saying you. the bleeding of the recession didn't stop in 2009 when we did the stimulus package, and that you're telling me that there was great job growth inspired by tax cuts for a decade that preceded 2009 that uh, really gave relief to the upper echelon and saw their income grow and we had 8.2 million jobs I lost. Am seeing, I the am seeing the utter failure of this yeah. big government spending Absolutely. and the fact that we are paying out so much in government benefits. It's an utter failure, Tom Price. That's Absolutely. the real story why GDP is barely growing at 1%. We're on the verge of another recession and we're talking about flushing out the most successful small business owners with tax hikes. That's what you know, I'm saying. Grow. And it won't grow as long as we continue these crazy policies. The stimulus was actually prolonged the, the challenge that we have and deepened the crisis that we have. It's time to get back to those wonderful American principles of allowing free people to go out and realize their dream. Get to work, get the government out of the way, decrease the, the dependency uh, uh, that the American people have, decrease their taxes so that they've got more disposable income to be able to go out and create jobs. Right, okay, we might yeah, even when like you that empower, regulations, too. I tell you, this spending, i, I got to go, gentlemen. All says. When you empower the middle class, you empower the American I economy. I want to empower all classes. I Amen. don't want to choose. I want to empower every single American. One of the greatest things that was done to empower this country was under Bill Clinton and Newt Gingrich when they put work requirements and limits on welfare. What we've exactly. done with food stamps and, let's go and back disability to the rates insurance, that and we have blown those categories wide open again, and that's why the economy is underperforming with all due respect. House Larry, members, let's go back to the rates right of the Clinton. Tom Price. We ought to follow Clinton's example with Gingrich because they got it right. Anyway.